Husker basketball is back in action. So wide open, Barcelo. Again! AB for three! Let's get you ready to root on the boys in blue. This is Cougar Pregame Live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Cougar Pregame Live is brought to you by Mountain America Credit Union. Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Also brought to you by Quick Quack Car Wash. Fast, clean, loved everywhere. And now, here's your host, Jason Shepard. Aloha, BYU basketball fans. Uh, Truth be told, I say that from Provo, but hey. It's all about Hawaii over the next couple of uh, games for the BYU Cougars, isn't it? Welcome into Cougar Pre-Game Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Tonight, the BYU Cougars are in Hawaii for the Diamond Head Classic. Up next is the first matchup for the Cougars. It is the Bulls of South Florida. And the good news is the Cougars coming off of a victory the last time BYU played was last Saturday when they beat Weber State in Ogden. That game was all about the three-point shooting. The Cougars made a season-high 16 threes in the blowout victory of the Wildcats. To nobody's surprise, Alex Barcelo led all scores with 23 points. What was most impressive about what A.B. did was of the 23, you had 18 of those coming in the second half. He hit a late three for his first points of the game and then hit a running uh, bank shot uh, to end the half. That gave him five at the half and then would finish with 23. He was absolutely brilliant. Also, a fantastic game for Seneca Knight, who came off the bench after starting the previous couple of games, came off to score 14 points. That game was a also just a good reminder of the type of shooting and the scoring that is on this BYU basketball team. That was certainly on display at the D Event Center. Now, tonight's matchup features two programs who haven't faced each other since back in 2010. The Cougars beat the Bulls back in 2010 in double overtime, 77-75, behind 32 points from a guy named Jimmer Fredette. Now, this season's USF team comes into today's matchup with a record of 4-5. and five. The Bulls dropped a 66-56 to contest to the University of Florida last Saturday. Caleb Murphy is the only South Florida player right now scoring in double figures. The 6'4 freshman guard is averaging only 13 points per game, but he's a really good shooter. Murphy shoots 46% from the field, and he's a 53% shooter from the perimeter. The problem for USF is that they don't score enough in general. Uh, The Cougars hold the advantage in just about every statistical category, including points per game where BYU has a 20 point advantage per contest over UCF. Bulls right now only scoring 57 points per game. They're not a great shooting team overall. I mentioned Caleb Murphy. He shoots the ball well, but from top to bottom, this is not a great shooting team. So in case you're wondering, this is BYU's ninth trip to Hawaii and the second appearance in the Diamond Head Classic. The Cougars are 12 and 12 in games played in Hawaii. So they can break that uh, that 50-50 right now, uh, the 500 record uh, over in the islands. And for more on tonight's matchup, our guy over in the islands is the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, and he was able to catch up with Alex Barcelo. And AB talks about BYU's ability to bounce back. Well, I think it starts with our coaches, Coach Pope, Coach Feger, Coach Robinson, um, Coach Burgess, uh, Coach Shork, our strength coach, Rob Ramos, our trainer, just all of them being together on the same page after a loss and really um, just making sure that we're we're having the urgency that we need to to get better. Um, we're able to watch the right film clips with our, our coaches. Just, I mean, the, from the minute we get on the plane, they're, they're clipping up film for us to watch and get better on um, from the game that we lost. So I, I would give credit to them. And then uh, how the guys respond to them. It's, it's been really special this year. Uh, you know, we, we haven't had perfect days after those losses with our response, but the way that we've been able to collectively come together and uh, really just kind of piggyback off each other uh, in response to those losses in practice the next day, it's really been special. And uh, I think it's it's fun to play on a team where you have that that, that sense of urgency and just to, you know, fix those mistakes that, that you need to get better on to, to make a run in the big dance at the end of the season. You took that loss to Creighton followed it with finals week and then an in-state game on the road in Ogden that's a special combination requiring a real special kind of effort definitely Creighton Creighton was a great team Uh, we we, sadly we we lost that game but then guys had to study every day with for finals uh, to get as good of grades as they could and then have not being able to play a a game all the way until Saturday kind of waiting all week on that loss it's not a good feeling Mm -hmm. 
And uh, we, I think that's what helped us give us that uh, push of energy in the Weber State game. Weber State's a great team, but us sitting on that loss and sitting with that ta- that bitter taste in our mouth the entire week, it just it made us come into practice more and more hungry every day. And you saw it leading up to the game, and then eventually on game day, our, our energy was like, we, we need this win. We need to come home with a win. And uh, that's what we did, and we were excited, you know, because it is. It, it was a test to us coming off of a loss like that, waiting all week, battling through the adversity with finals. It's... Um, you know, I, I think it was just a great test for us, and thankfully, we, you know, we passed that. We came, we came home with a win. You know, we, we've been kind of trying to just stay in the mindset of this is what we do. You know, we're, we're going to celebrate this win. We're going to enjoy it for the night, but then we're, we're on to the next team um, the next day. And uh, I think that's what makes the, you know, that, that's what makes the mark of a great team is, you know, you're willing to celebrate those wins, but on to the next one. You know, having that mindset of th- this isn't, you know, this isn't our Super Bowl. We we we're our goal is a lot bigger than this, and, and that's you know, that's what we're set out to do. And the next one now is a week in Hawaii with three games in four days. Yes, sir. It's going to be another another test, another battle. Hopefully, we don't get any injuries. But with, with playing three games in four days, it, it's tough. You know, we got to stay on top of our bodies. And Coach Short does such a great job with that. Rob Ramos with our treatment. Um, you know, you just in here, uh, we were we came off of practice and he's already icing guys uh, after Coach Stork ran us through the stretch, um, making sure that we're watching as much film as we can because there's quick turnarounds after each game. You know, we got we got to hop on scout for the next team, and uh, that's what we do. It's going to be a great test for us, but we're ready for it, and uh, we're excited. Another trip to Hawaii for you, not your first time, of course, and last time was with BYU and Maui. Yes, sir. Um, some good memories there. It, there's some really good memories and uh, a lot of guys that, that aren't here anymore, and I, I miss them a lot. But, uh, you know, a new team, new faces, and uh, we are still we still got the same goal, you know, got to win every game. What's the right mix when you come to Hawaii of biz- business and pleasure? Uh, you know, you, you got you to gotta step out and clear your mind. Like last night, a few guys went on a walk, just, you know, a 15, 20-minute walk along the beach after we got done with our lifts. So I, I think there's a good balance, but, you know, we're, we're here to win games, and, and that's, what, that's what we're focused on. What's your favorite part of the islands, either favorite activity or favorite food? Oh, I like the pineapple here. It's really good. I'm a, I'm a big fruit guy, so uh, I've been killing the pineapple. Good vibes here on the islands. Hopefully you can pick up a three wins and a tournament title to go along with it. A.B., thanks for the time. Yes, sir. Thank you, Greg. Thanks to Greg Rubel uh, talking with Alex Barcelo. And uh, if you were listening to the, uh, the broadcast on, uh, on Saturday, last Saturday at Weber State, having this conversation with Seneca Knight, and uh, Seneca making his first uh, trip to Hawaii. Uh, I have also never been to Hawaii, so I'm very excited. One of these, my wife's been there twice. She always never lets me forget that, by the way, that she's been there twice. I have not been there at all. Uh, it is certainly a bucket list, but uh, but hearing, um, you know, Greg ask AB about, you know, how's what's the mix of because you're you're in you're in paradise. You're in a a, a place with beaches everywhere, and the the weather is warm. But yet, as AB said, you know, the goal is to go to Hawaii and to have these. You know these basketball games, and to be victorious and, and come out, you know the the winner of the Diamond Head Classic. So uh, that is always, and when we talk about this with bowl games, at the same time, you know when when the football team goes to whatever location, uh, probably not Shreveport is one you'll will think back on in terms of uh, great places to go. But you know when you go to a bowl game, how do you manage the activities and the celebration of it versus the game itself? And so I think that's always one of those things, especially when you're playing three games in four days, which is what BYU will do. They'll play tonight. They will play again tomorrow. Uh, they will not play on Christmas Eve, but they will play Christmas Day. So three games in four days. I think that I think the teams and the programs that can handle that situation uh, is, uh, you know, those are the teams. Obviously, you have to be really good, uh, and, and BYU is certainly that. Uh, but the teams that can handle everything that is involved in a week like this, I think typically are the ones that come out victorious. Uh, but yeah, the, the Hawaiian trip, one of these days, one of these days I will make it to Hawaii. Guess what? That's where we're going to go next because one other person is there besides Greg Rubel. That would be Mark Durant. Our courtside conversation from the Sheriff Center is coming up next. Mark Durant joining us on the other side. Cougar pregame live continues in a moment on the new skin, BYU Sports. Standing basketball, not just tonight, but over uh, the next four days, three games in four days should be fun. Um, let's talk about this team coming into this game. The Cougars 9-2 and two through 11 games, which is fantastic. How much better does that record look when you take into account the number of personnel issues that BYU has had to deal with? Uh, it's remarkable, really. I mean, a, a lot of respects, it's like football. I mean, you're playing really good teams, and you're depleted with injuries and other things, and you're still winning games. You drop a, you drop a couple here and there, but... 
overall, man, if you tell me with that schedule coming into this season that that's where BYU's sitting right now, I'd be just thrilled. I'd take it in a second. And, and, and the exciting thing is I think this team can get a lot better as well. I think, you know, they're really starting to come around last three games with their three-point shot. If they can keep that up, that'll be, you know, huge, obviously, for BYU if they can be a, a threat to the three-point line. And that just makes – Everything else better when you're you threat to make threes and you then the defenses have to really extend and you can get by them and, and make twos. I mean it, it it helps all aspects of your game. They're I think they're a decent defensive team. I think they have a lot of improvement they could do on defense, especially on the ball one on one uh, defense. I think is a little bit of a weakness and it was hidden a little bit early with with Gavin Baxter behind you uh, blocking shots, but. Uh, that, that's something they certainly can work on. But rebounding, I had a real concern about how they would do rebounding-wise. But, man, they've had some nice nice rebounding games. I mean, they dominated Weaver State on the boards. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, that, 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 those are all good signs. But that three-point number is the most important thing. And, and I think if BYU can continue to shoot that three, there's a lot more wins in their future. You know, we were joking with Coach Pope uh, before we went on the air for post game, and I, and I told him, I said, hey, let's just go ahead and pencil in 16 made threes. And, you know, and he laughed. But it's a situation where there's a season-high 16 threes. The looks weren't different than what BYU had in previous games, and we've even heard Coach Pope talk about that. Even some of the games where the shooting struggled from the perimeter, it was within the offense. The shots they were getting were good shots. He liked what they were taking. But in this game, the shots were falling at a high rate. So how do you handle that? When you're getting the shots that you want from game to game, how do you judge that if it's, if it's just a matter of making or missing? Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're getting yeah, what you want in both situations, it really does just come down to whether or not the team's on that night, right? Right. I mean, the coaches, all they can do is get you the shot, really, and they, they can't shoot the ball for you, so they're relying on their players to hit them. But I think I think what he was trying to say is that the coaches know these guys. They know the players, and they've been with them for months and months and years some cases, and they know if guys can make shots. I mean, it's not – they're not expecting them to do something they haven't seen them do over the past two years. They know which guys can make shots. And you know, take a guy like Trevin Nell. I mean, clearly uh, he's got a, a, a sweet J, a beautiful jumper, I mean, great form, pure shooter. There's, there's no way he shouldn't be shooting a higher number than he was. So then you ask yourself, well, why wasn't he making threes? Well, he, he, first of all, you kind of got to get used to the game. He hasn't played a ton. Uh of minutes every game. I mean, he's obviously building on that, but he gets the start and he he's getting more minutes. And then instead of just shooting two or three times a game, it's hard to get in the flow shooting two or three times a game. But now he's shooting eight or ten times a game, and he gets the stroke and he gets the confidence. So it's not that he became a better shooter; it's just he became more comfortable. And 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 shooting shooting a three in a game is different than shooting three. At the church gym, you know, I mean, it's, it's a different, you got to kind of acclimate no your, your mind. <laughs> There's no carpet. And you got to acc acclimate your mind to, to what it's like to shoot a three in a game. And I think Trev is doing that, shooting the lights out. Uh, that go, and I'm talking about you, I'm talking about you, man. <laughs> and he just came over to, to say, hey. But uh, a guy like Tijon Lucas, I think, is a guy that uh, can shoot more. Uh, he, he wasn't a guy that was struggling, but he could shoot more. And then the other guy I would point out, Jason, is uh, Seneca. Uh, I think I was more of a finding out just how does he fit in this offense. He looked yeah. a, a little bit lost at times. And do I I'm, – I'm not where I was. I can't just take the ball every time and just go try and score. I, I got to do things differently than I did uh, in the last place. And so he's got to figure out where he fits. And now he's kind of getting that same feel as, as Trevin as he's – He's, he knows where he's supposed to be. He knows the shots he's supposed to shoot. He's shooting them with confidence. So you're seeing a lot of different guys that uh, are just kind of, you know, finding out how to, to shoot that shot in this kind of situation, and the numbers are going up. So it's always been about getting the open shots. Now it's just about the guys feeling confident that they can hit the shots when they're open. And now all we've got to do is work on Caleb. Uh, I think if, if he can shoot, uh, and I'm not asking him to shoot 40%, but, you know, 25 to 30% where he's a threat, to make the shot if you don't guard him on the three-point line, that would really help this team and open up the floor, and uh, and I think he can do it. Uh, and, again, like I said, I've seen him do it, so yeah. I'm not asking him to do things that he can't do. Uh, it's just a matter of getting his confidence right. And I thought he made some steps in the right direction against Weaver, and, and I think he's, he's going to be just fine. It's just the quicker the better. 
Out of the gate, BYU gets a four and five USF team. What are your thoughts on this uh, on this Bulls team? Uh, I had mentioned in the first segment, you know, all all of the statistics say BYU uh, should be the heavy favorite in this one. They are averaging scoring 20 more points per game. Uh, in fact, I, I believe that it's uh, it's 50 59 points per game is what USF is scoring, and then they're giving up 56. I mean, they're they're in a lot of close games. So, what do you make of this Bulls team in this matchup tonight? Yeah, these games always scare me when you have a, a team that's really good at defense and they're top 15 team in defense and they don't score a lot of points. I mean, it was like when we used to play Air Force. We were better than Air Force, and they would just kind of take the air out of the ball, and you know the type of guys you're going to be playing when you play the Air Force is tough, and they're just going to battle you and be physical. And all they are trying to do was be in the game at the end and have a chance, I mean, a little bit like UVU. They just want to be in the game. They're not going to beat you by 20, but you're not going to beat them by 20. And they just want to be in the game, you know, four or five points, last five minutes, and then – anything could happen to any team in the last five minutes of a game and so they just try to stick around so i don't look at the record as much i look at then i go to all the losses right and i look okay well how many did they lose by and almost every game except maybe one they're in that you know five to ten point range where if it's if it's you know the ball bounces the right way they could win that game and so it's a scary game and uh byu is going to have their work cut out they, they they block a lot of shots and it's going to be hard to get those open looks that we talked about. So, I mean, it, it on paper, and I think realistically speaking, BYU's a better team, but they do something really well. That, that is the Bulls, and they do it really well. That's defense, which may give them a chance. I mean, if you can do some one thing really, really well, yeah. and you do it well, and uh, that you might have a chance in the game. So we'll see how it goes. But they're, they're not a good offensive team. They're terrible three-point shooters and don't shoot a lot of threes. So... I mean, it's a game I think BYU will win, but it, it'll, it'll be a battle. And if BYU wins, they're going to go home and maybe a little bruised and, and battered up after this one. And, and uh, they'll have to have some re relaxation on the beach to recover because it's going to be a tough one. All right, last thing. Uh, I was uh, speculating uh, a few minutes ago, and, and now it's been confirmed. Uh, seeing uh, Greg's tweet talking with Coach Pope, he is going to go with the same starting five that we saw against Weber State. So Barcelo, Lucas, Nell, Loner, and then uh, Atiki Ali Atiki at the five. Mark, I like that. And I know that Atiki didn't play a ton of minutes, but I, I like the fact that it does put guys back because Atiki's six foot nine. You, you get him in, you can get him some minutes uh, at the five, and it drops everybody back to their natural positions. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't go small and play Loner at the five, but it means he's playing less minutes there or guys are playing less minutes at positions that they're not necessarily as comfortable with as their natural position. So I actually like this, and I'm curious to see how long Atiki Ali Atiki can play tonight because I, I think this could be a really good role for him. Yeah, that's the hard part about the injuries. It's not that they have two injuries, which is not great, obviously, but if you have, if you lose your five and you lose your two-man, let's say, yeah, that, that's fine, but you lost two fives, and so now you're playing your third five, but if, if you don't want to play your third five, that forces everyone else to play a different number. And you know, some guys can do that fine, but they, they, the, the team, you know, it wasn't even conceivable that you wouldn't have that five guy because you had three of them. Uh, and, and so the team all summer and, and working up to, uh, to when Gavin and Richard were, were out officially, uh, that's how you played. So guys, that's what the guys are used to. And if, you, if you're not, if Caleb has to play the five, he's not used to that. And then you have to move everyone up a spot to play that different spot. And so the, here's the thing about Tiki. Uh, tr tremendous presence. And he'd do some really good things for you. You just have to tell yourself he's going to do some bad things. Yeah. He's going to turn it over. He's going to get lost at times. He's going to make some mistakes defensively. He's a young player. And he's going to do it. And so you just say, okay, you're going to do it. But you're also going to do some good things. And you're going to allow everyone else to play the spots they want to play, get the shots they want to get. And, and keep shooting those threes and making the threes, so you're not radically adjusting everything in your offense. And Atiki gives him that, and he'll and he'll get better and better. He'll figure it out, but it, you know you just have to recognize it's going to be uh, some growing pains with him out on the floor. Mark, great stuff, man. Always appreciate it. And uh, we will be talking quite a bit over the next couple of days. Enjoy the game tonight, and in, uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, the week. We'll talk with you uh, tomorrow. 
All right. Thanks, my friend. We'll see you. There we go. Mark Durant. We will take a break. Coming up next, we'll uh, check out some other scores going on tonight in college basketball. Before we do, though, stop by your local Big O Tires for no credit needed financing and the lowest price on every tire every day. Big O Tires, the team you trust. More Cougar pregame live next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's get you back to Cougar Pregame Live with your host, Jason Shepard. Welcome back to Cougar Pregame Live, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics, getting you ready for the BYU Cougars and the USF Bulls. And fans, remember, when the Cougars win, you win with Papa John's Pizza. With a BYU win tonight, pizza will be 50% off at PapaJohns.com using the online promo code BYU50 tomorrow. This offer is good at any Utah location. Let's update you on some top 25 games before we get out of here. A good one between number 19, Tennessee, and number 6, Arizona. The Vols with a one-point lead over the Wildcats at 63-62 with just under five minutes to go in that game. Also, number 13, Houston, with a big lead over Texas State at the break, 45-22. to One bowl game to update you on, the Armed Forces Bowl. Mizzou leading Army with, uh, well, actually the second ha- second quarter uh, just underway, about 14 minutes to go in the first half. Mizzou with a 10-7 lead over the Black Knights. All right, that's going to do it. Coming up next, we'll get you out to the Sheriff Center for the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show with Greg Rubel. You're listening to BYU Basketball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's time to get the inside scoop on today's game. This is the Cougar Pregame Coaches Show, brought to you by Zions Bank. For a financial slam dunk, Zions Bank is for you. Also brought to you by Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Now let's head back to the Built Bar courtside seats and join the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening and aloha, Cougar basketball fans. Welcome courtside inside the Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii in Honolulu for BYU's opening game in the 2021 Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Tonight, BYU tips off its tourney slate by squaring off against South Florida. Second all-time meeting between these two teams. The first took place at another neutral court event, the South Padre Island Invitational 11 years ago. Mark did that game. I did not. I a called game. that game. I was the Greg Rubel for that game. <laughs> game won by BYU in double overtime. I don't even remember it, but it was exciting. <laughs> I remember St. Mary's, though. St. Mary's was also yeah. in that same deal. That's right. I'm Greg Rubel. I'll have your play-by-play call tonight. Joined on the headset by the former Cougar hoopster, Mark Durant. And uh, Mark, after yet another impressive bounce-back win over the weekend at Weber State, the Cougars now open a three-games-in-four-days stretch. It's a tournament play. That uh, sees up-tempo BYU as the best team in the field by metrics, but it's an interesting matchup in the opener because South Florida plays nothing but low-scoring grinders. Yeah, I mean, these games are so tough. I used to hate playing in them, and it's just... The re- Listen, they're kind of like Utah to me uh, because they just, they're just going to grind you, and uh, the score is going to be low, and they're going to be super physical with Barcelo. We'll see how the referees call it today. Then they've got some big guys that can block shots in the paint. So uh, it, it's going to be tough to kind of get those easy buckets down low. If, you sh- if you're in the paint, Greg, because uh, you're in the paint a lot, I know, when yeah. you play, mm-hmm. is uh, and you shoot it without a pump fake, you're, you've made a mistake. You need to give pump fakes. You need to get up guys up in the air. You need to draw multiple defenders. You, you've got to be smart about that because if you shoot it and you didn't give a pump fake, it's going to get blocked or you're going to have to sh- you know shoot it too high. I mean, you, you don't have to block a shot to affect a shot. So I think the sweet spot – Here's my here's my dream for tonight. BYU keeps shooting the threes like they have been because that's a pretty good formula for success. Mm-hmm. But then it's it's the 10 to 15 foot shot, which I think is a real sweet spot against teams like that. Trevin Nell's been very good. Seneca's really starting to heat up. Obviously, Alex Barcelo, Tijon, you get it. Don't take it all the way to the hoop. Just get in that little sweet spot. Hit those jumpers. After this break, we'll hear from BYU head coach Mark Pope as the Zions Bank Cougar pregame coaches show continues live from Honolulu, Hawaii on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're tuned to the Cougar pregame coaches show. For more with head coach Mark Pope, let's rejoin your host, Greg Rubel. 
Coming to you live from courtside inside the Stan Sheriff Center on the University of Hawaii campus in Honolulu, site of the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Third game of four games on the opening day slate. Earlier today, a couple of close games. Liberty defeated Northern Iowa 76-74. That was a one-possession game. Then another one-possession game in the second of two. Stanford 66 and Wyoming 63. Liberty will take on Stanford tomorrow in the championship bracket. You and I will take on Wyoming in the consolation bracket. Tonight's winner will face Vanderbilt or Hawaii tomorrow night at a time to be determined once the nightcap is complete and we find out when Hawaii will be playing tomorrow because UH will get tomorrow's late game regardless of a win or loss for the uh, Rainbow Warriors tonight. It's time now for our pregame interview with BYU head coach Mark Pope presented by Zions Bank for a financial slam dunk. Zions Bank is for you. And tonight, the coach talks about the unique challenge of taking his quicker tempo team into a game against one of the slowest, lowest scoring teams in the country. They're a, actually a great, you know, they're a top-notch defensive team. Um, for example, you know, they played, I think, Auburn's number 12 or 13 now. They held Auburn to 10 points in the first 15 minutes of the game. I mean, it's five minutes left in the first half, and you're looking at the score, and it's 22 to 10. And you're like, this is incredible. Uh, you know, they started out on Florida. Florida couldn't score for the first five minutes of yep. the game. So this is, a, this is a great defensive team. They're long. They're physical. They play really, really hard. They do what they do defensively really, really well. They challenge every pass. They flood the bottom. They bring two to the ball on every ball screen. Uh, and they just have unbelievable size and length. So, so you know, that, that part of this game is going to be a great challenge. The mantra of turning frustration into fight co- might come into play in this kind of game because it can get a little frustrating. Yeah, it's, it, you know, we've talked to our guys about that. If, we'll, if, we, um, if we get frustrated because they're a good defensive team and we get away from us and we start staying on one side and we start getting sticky and we start slowing down and we start losing our force, uh, then it's problematic. Our, the key for us is whether whether we're scoring or not. We have to stay committed to our movement and our pace and our pace, pace, space, and extra passes. That that's what we do. And if we stay committed to it, we'll have breakthroughs in this game. Uh, we just can't run away from it because we got a little frustrated early on. A ragged game, still a game you can win. Yeah, we're good at these games. I mean, this is actually a great test for us for our conference. You know, we have so many games. You know, this is like a San Diego State type feel, right, where you just know it's going to be a slugfest the whole night. It's a St. Mary's type deal. It's, you know, we have a ton of games like this. So this is a great uh, game for us to kind of learn about who we are and where we are and how, how – how capable we are to absorb frustration and keep going. What did you find in your new starting five from the Weber State game? It just it just let us kind of move people back to positions that they're more familiar with. I think it let us have a better chance at more matchups about coming away with a win on more matchups. Um, you know, I, 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 I think that, you know, we'll probably keep fiddling with this lineup a little bit as we move forward, but I think all our guys are getting better. Okay, so Atiki starts in the post, and uh, is it almost a situation of uh, it's deep end time for a guy like Atiki where we just got to go with this? Yeah, I mean, he's, you know, uh, we just it's just the best thing for our team right now is to throw him out there to start this game and, and just see what happens. It's actually an unbelievable opportunity for him, and it's fun, and, and uh, sometimes we see crazy things happen in the first few minutes, but, but it's, a, it's a growing learning experience. And the, the most important thing for us, we always talk about this, is ultimately our goal is, We'd like to win every game, but more important than that, we need to be the best team we can at the end of the season. And so, you know, we might take a little bit of a hit right now because we're not as experienced on the floor, but I believe that this is going to pay off for us in the long run as we as we move into, you know, January, and February, and March. Um, we'll, we'll have guys that are actually a little bit seasoned. They can actually carry more of a load. So we just have to do it. Uh, you know, everybody's uh, dealing with things as they happen throughout the season, and certainly we are. And, and um, so I'm excited about it. This is actually super fun. It makes you really nervous. It makes you really edgy, but it's really fun to um, give teams a chance to grow, and certainly our team has a chance. It's a transformative team, and this is this is a different vibe than you thought you'd be uh, feeling right now when you started the season. A hundred percent, and that, that's why you have deep teams, and that's why you have uh, – you know, veteran guys that, that are more capable of adjusting and, and kind of protecting some of the young guys. And um, it's why you put together teams the way you do is so that you can take a couple major, major hits and still have a team that's going to, you know, be competitive at the highest level. And that's what we're striving to do. The three-point numbers really come around the last couple of weeks. When you've got good shooters, does that kind of thing always even itself out, do you think, by the end of the year? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, you know, I think that you know when you believe you can't control 
the outcome of shots on any given particular shot. I mean, it just is. But but the trend is is I think the trend is pretty faithful, and we have good shooters on our team. And the, the, I think more important than kind of making or missing shots that we've talked about is winning when you don't make shots. That's the most important thing. And 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 good teams can do that. They can win when they don't make shots. And um, we've proven that we've been able to do that this year, and we need to keep growing so that we can do it at an even better rate. Finally, Coach, I know, I know you'd like to acknowledge certain historical touch points. This is BYU's 10th tournament in the state of Hawaii. Do you know how many tournaments BYU's won in the previous nine? I'm guessing not that many. Okay. This is a chance this week to do something no yeah. BYU basketball team has ever done, yeah. and you got to get the first one to make that a possibility. Well, I love history, and, and uh, so we would sure love to have a shot at that, but we gotta we got to take care of business tonight. This is, a, this is a really, really good team, and it's a really, really tough matchup for us. Okay, hopefully we're talking about this again in a couple of days. Okay. Thanks, Greg. All right, that's Mark Pope leading us into tonight's Keys to the Game, brought to you by Ford, built Ford Proud. Mark Durant has tonight's Keys to the Game. Yeah, so South Florida is not a good three-point shooting team. 24% only make about four a game. BYU makes a little over eight a game. So I'm going to go with that. I think if you see BYU at least doubling up on May threes, it's going to be hard for the Bulls to keep pace with BYU. So look for that number. Twice as many threes from BYU. There it is. As we go to break, we remind you that Smith's has all your fresh game day grilling favorites. And when you shop today, you can get free pickup on orders of $35 or more. Just order from the app or at Kroger.com and make your game day great. Smith's fresh for everyone. Coming up next, the BYU Store Cougar tip-off show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. It's almost time to hit the hardwood. This is the Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Also brought to you by the BYU Creamery, the classic BYU tradition. Have a scoop today. Also by Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 30 years. Now, let's head live to the Built Bar courtside seats and join Mark Durant alongside the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again, Cougar basketball fans. Welcome back inside the Stan Sheriff Center in Honolulu, Hawaii, and the BYU Cougars opening game in the 2021 Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. Tonight, it's 9-2, and two, BYU taking on 4-5 and five South Florida. BYU playing its seventh game outside the Marriott Center this year. The Cougs are 4-2 and two away from home. The Bulls playing only their third away neutral game of the season, and USF has uh, yet to win away from home. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show, brought to you by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Greg Grubel and Mark Duran with you from courtside. Well, Saturday night in Ogden, BYU used its fourth different starting lineup of the season as Mark Pope's uh, rotation transformation continued to evolve with the addition of Atiki Ali Atiki to the starting five. Back to the bench went Seneca Knight, who responded with his new BYU career scoring high, 14 points. Uh, Atiki didn't play a ton, but BYU got some length down low, and Mark, it's clear that the young guys, including Atiki and Fuseni Traore, are all going to have to grow up in a hurry. Meantime, Seneca Knight continues to grow into his role as a slasher and a scorer for the Cougs. Yeah, I like the trajectory of all the guys you talked about, particularly Seneca. You know, early in the season, I, I watched him play, and I could almost see the indecision. He's like, I got the ball. I used to shoot it every time I got the ball, but I don't know if I should shoot it here or should I, should I drive. He just didn't quite know how he fit in with BYU's offense and what his role was, and now I think he's very comfortable in that. And, he, and, he, and when he makes the decision, he, he's very decisive about it, and he goes and, and gets the points. He's knocking down his threes a little bit better. So, yeah, I think Seneca Knight is – what, with what he's done in the past in his his career, we know he can score, and BYU needs scorers. And as he continues to kind of get back into that role, it's only going to help BYU. And teams are going to be able to just throw everything that they have against Alex Barcelo because Seneca will hurt him or Tijon will hurt him. You just have to have other weapons, and that makes it tougher on teams to stop your main weapon, who's Alex Barcelo. Well, here we are in Hawaii, and we're telling you that mouth-watering Hawaiian-style food is minutes away from the Marriott Center. Fresh off the grilled chicken, teriyaki steak, and sizzling shrimp, Coconut Island Grill has the island flavors your mouth has been waiting for. Text the word COCONUT to 61090 for a free drink with your next meal. That's COCONUT with two Ks, K-O-K-O-N-U-T to 61090. Coming up after this break, we'll hear from South Florida assistant coach Jason Slay as coverage of the 2021 Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic continues live from the Stan Sheriff Center in Honolulu on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.
This is the Cooper Tip-Off Show. Let's head back live courtside and join Greg Rubel. We are courtside at the Stan Sheriff Center in Honolulu, Hawaii for our opening night play at the Hawaiian Airlines Diamond Head Classic. BYU facing South Florida for the second time all time. Winner gets Vanderbilt or Hawaii tomorrow night in the tournament semifinals. Tonight's two losers meet in the consolation bracket tomorrow evening. Yeah. Earlier today, winners were Liberty and Stanford. South Florida, one of the stingiest teams in the country. Top 15 in scoring defense and field goal percentage defense, but the Bulls can combine that defensive prowess with some pretty rough offensive numbers. They rank in the 300s in two point and three point percentage and around 300th from the free throw line but as assistant coach Jason Slade told me a short time ago South Florida keeps games where they need to be point totals in the 50s and 60s and a chance to win most games yeah that's what I would say that's our identity I think we established that early on and we build on it every day so it's a work in progress especially in our coaches eyes but I'll tell you what the guys are buying into it and again it's keeping us in games and keeping guys percentages down to whoever we face that's the thing. You're always in every game. Things never get away from you. Yeah, and again, it's just I, I give all the compliment to Coach Gregory. I think it's his Michigan State background, being with Tom Izzo. That's who he is as a coach. All the stops he's been at Dayton and Georgia Tech, and it's just carried over here to South Florida to where guys just buy into it because we work on it so much. What is the most important thing to work on when you get a team together and say, this is who we're going to be this year? Well, it starts with principles. You know, whatever our philosophy is, and we're a gap team, and obviously we're an aggressive team with pressure in the ball and uh, guarding ball screens because that's the name of the game these days. So, you know, it starts there, and then I think it just trickles down to, you know, whatever scout it is, we make sure that we know what the other team is doing and we try to stop their initial actions. Do you sense other teams either tightening up or getting frustrated or not liking the way they have to play? Yeah, of course, and especially systematic teams that, you know, expect their offense to put them in good positions to score. Again, we kind of take that initial, you know, movement or whatever it is, shots away from them and then when they have to play after the play that's when I think they get tight and take bad shots and that works in our favor whether it's Auburn first 10 minutes Florida first six seven minutes you see that where teams are just not getting the stuff they expect to get yes yes and again I think it goes back to our preparation um starts with coach Gregory um us assistants and then the players buying into it so when we go into a game plan we're very confident about what the other teams are doing both teams leaning on the backcourt right now for scoring BYU and USF that is yes I mean I tell you what Barcelo and Lucas and it's funny Lucas was in my conference the last two years because I was at Youngstown State as associate okay. coach and he was at Milwaukee Wisconsin so know all about him but Barcelo is a 50-50-90 guy right now that's only person in the country doing that so we have our work cut out but yes we do have Caleb Murphy and Javon Green kind of leading our way right now and we expect that to be the same tonight. How nice to lean on Caleb the way you have been. Yes yes I mean he's the leader of our team and we, we, we lean on him a lot um, and you know what again he's a good kid and he's buying in and we're just trying to get them better and better each and every game. BYU will be leaving for the Big 12 year in a couple years with some teams coming out of the American. How does that play and how do you see that whole transition occurring? You know what? It was a big change Um, and and, uh, you know, compliment to BYU and obviously Houston leaving our conference and Central Florida as well. Uh, So the dynamics were really changed. And Cincinnati, yes, you're right. And uh, so the dynamics have changed a little bit. So we're just going to figure it out as it goes along as well with new teams coming in and the things will change but we'll adjust to it as best we can. Can we hit Marcelo and Lucas a little bit? Maybe a couple more thoughts about this BYU team you face tonight. Uh, hard playing, very tough. I think that's underestimated. They are a tough physical team, especially their big guys. They're going to get down there and bang offensive rebounds, so we put a lot of emphasis on that. And they just they move really fast. The ball goes from one side to the other, so we got to really lock in and make sure we're playing our principles defensively. What were your connections from Tampa to Honolulu? How did you get out here, and how's the trip been so far? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's been really good. It's been good. We, um, we went from from Tampa to L.A., and then we came L.A. to here. So it was, you know, five hours to L.A., and then it was about five and a half to get here. Um, we handled it well. We've got time to have our rest and get acclimated. So, again, now it's game time. We want to get out here, develop some confidence, because we have one more game before we start conference play. So we want to make the best of every opportunity we have out here these next four days. All right, Coach Slay, thank you for the time. I appreciate you taking it, and happy holidays, and best of luck. Good travels to you all, and have a great season. Thank you. Happy holidays. That is South Florida assistant coach Jason Slay. This is the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to the Cougar Tip-Off Show. Let's rejoin Craig Rubel. BYU South Florida coming up. 
here at the Diamond Head Classic. Uh, last time BYU got to a championship game in a Hawaii tournament, 1992 Maui. BYU with Mark Durant lost to number one Duke after beating Oklahoma and Memphis. I think there's a direct correlation with me being on the floor and us losing to number one Duke. <laughs> In 2022, BYU men's basketball will be dunking on cancer through generous donations. Each BYU dunk during WCC play will raise money for the BYU Simmons Center for Cancer Research. For more information on the Cougs' fight against cancer, go to sccr at chem.byu.edu. Final thoughts before tip-off next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. The Cougar Tip-Off Show rolls on. Let's head back live courtside. National Anthem, tip-off of BYU in South Florida. Coming up next, this has been the BYU Store Cougar Tip-Off Show, live from Honolulu, Hawaii, on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.